what's going on guys, Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, on today's little video, it's been about seven weeks now, seven or eight weeks, I've been bad with my back, it's finally on the mend, went and saw the old spinal um, surgeon yesterday and he said to me that it's just a really badly extruded disc and the best thing to do is leave it for now, let it heal, it's been getting a lot better recently, I'm getting a lot of strength back, I'm still taking it easy and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building that little TARDIS of a coal bunker that I've got outside and um, in these old Welsh houses here, they had two little coal bunkers which ran down the side of the properties and uh, which was just basically for storing fuel for the winter. Um, but obviously now everyone's got electric fires and electric this and boilers and different things. So no one really uses coal anymore. So they're all not in use. They were, the, ours was used as a storeroom before, but I've just cleaned it right out as you, if you followed the, uh, the channel. Um, I've added two plastic doors. I've also painted it all out, got rid of all the rubbish that was in there. And um, and we're going to try and make this, well we are going to make it, into my little coral breeding room slash whatever else I can fit in their room. Now it's about three and a half feet wide by about 18 foot long, if I haven't said that already. And what I'm going to do is, before we get to all the fun stuff, what we've got to do first is we've got to put a ceiling up. We've got to insulate that underneath first to keep the heat in because we don't want to be using millions of watts of power and it costs us a fortune to heat the place because it's only... It's only a very, it's only a single skin brick and block construction. So um, we've insulated the ceiling. Um, I've got to run the electrics in. I've got to put the, obviously the ceiling up, ceiling lighting, all that kind of stuff. And um, anyway, I'm really excited to get on with this build. I'm feeling really good today. It's nice and early in the morning. Looks a bit dark here in the in the uh, in the fish room here, in the workshop. But without further ado, let's shoot off into the new coral room to be, and let's get started. All right, guys, exciting stuff. I've only got minimal lighting in here at the moment guys, I've just been breaking out some of the tools, I've been doing a bit of foaming around the ceiling and stuff, and what I'm going to be doing, oh pardon me, we turn around this way now, it's a bit narrow in here, but I've just been playing around, we've got the electrics to sort out as well, and I'm also going to be insulating and putting up these, uh, this shiplap boarding, which is, going to, which is going to be going all the way across the ceiling there, before we fit that nice big strip light there in the corner to the top, so we can get lots of... Uh, Lots of new light coming into this little room. As you can see, I've still got a, a leak which is coming through my roof, which is running down the walls there. It's been absolutely atrocious weather for the last sort of eight weeks, I would say. And I've been six weeks near enough on my back, so um, I'm going to have to get up there. It's an existing hole. I thought I actually fixed it, but obviously not. The rain will always find a way inside. As we all know, if you've got leaks in on workshops or roofs or anything like that, it's a nightmare to try and find out where these things are coming from without resurfacing the whole roof again. But... Sadly, I can't afford to do the whole roof, so I'm just going to have to go up there and play it and wing it for now. And I've just been putting some squirty insulation in there just to fill up a few little holes and things. I'll skim all them back and they're all going to be hidden underneath the, the boarding for the time being. Just been racking all the way around in the corner here with that three, three foot square table, um, which is going to go on there, coral table. And then across here then, I'm going to have a series of either a bank of tanks or one big long tank going across here because I'm going to have lots of coral and different things and frags in this back end here and then going down this way I'm either going to have two racks of smallish tanks to put little invertebrates in, crit critters and all those uh, little fish micro habitat stuff and concentrate on them mostly so uh, that's the deal so far guys so I've just got the old kettle on I've fitted in these two new plastic doors they all need to be made good around the edges and things but I'll do all that with plastic it's only an old coal bunker so it's very very narrow it's only got out the old um, evolution uh, saw there which is amazing really good cross cut saw it will cut through aluminium you name it spindle sander over there that's just in here and I've got my router and different things in here as well extension lead good old hammer got my air nailer there which are uh, tacker which I'm going to put these things up with um, so I'm going to go from there so I'll come back when this has all been done finished off and uh, see what the ceiling looks like all right guys right guys I've been busy and we now have a ceiling that's a bit better just put a nice light up there as well a nice big strip light which is uh, lighting up the uh, the area nicely started with the wiring obviously just down there just put a plug on there stuck an old socket on there for now a little bit of a crack in there but that'll do nice and solid for now I'm gonna buy some more sockets and do those up as you can see, it was an old coal bunker there. You got an old letterbox there with some of my straps in. This is the stuff I use. This is a tongue and groove board. Um, 
works really well. And we've got a nice ceiling up there now. So I've got to get up on the roof when it's dry and um, and get the rest of those little little seeping little holes sealed up. I know, I think I know where they are. I looked yesterday and I think I know where it's coming in. I think it's a little couple of screw holes which have uh, rusted out on top of the roof. So I'll, um, I'll fix those. Now I've got to clean up all this mess, make out a tailor this lot, find homes for it. And I'll get back to you because what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start running the electrics in from the house. Now I'm not going to show you anything about electricity and houses and things because um, I don't want anyone hurting themselves. I know what I'm doing, and um, but I wouldn't want anyone else to uh, to hurt themselves running power from their house because you've got to take it from the fuse board all the way through into a new little um, consumer box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a row of sockets all the way around, the same as this. I've got all the bits down in a box here. All these little little connectors here, which is like blank ends, 90 degree bends, so we can run. Everything's going to be nicely uh, hidden away. All the electrics are going to be high. I've got a load of sockets down there in the corner. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to run a... I'm tripping up over my stuff now. I'm going to run a, a nice row of sockets now all the way along here, because we're going to have that three foot tank in this corner. That's three foot square. So it's obviously it's a short shorter because I don't want it to take up the full the full span. Um, got a great deal of room in here guys. But it's amazing how much you can get in a small little area like this. It really is. So I've done it before. And looking down there, it's probably I would say 18 feet long. But you don't need huge tanks, especially when you're doing breeding and different things. So I'm going to bring out small tanks, even if they're only 8 inches wide. Remember those little Tetra breeding tanks that I bred those in? They were only 2.5 gallons. 8 inches wide they were. And I've got to also open the door. This is how close the door goes to the wall. Look at that. Not very far. So we've literally got 8 inches there. So I might put a load of rows of 8 inch longer tanks in here. So I can do breeding and different things in those. But well, that's going to be interesting. But I'll let you, uh, I'll let you in on it as we go along, okay? Now the ceiling's done, and as you can see, I'm just starting to put all the plug sockets in that are running all the way around. That's a horrible stain on the roof that's coming down from the ceiling, which is going to be repaired very, very shortly. Um, so there you go. We've got the the wiring started all the way around. So we've got multitude of. You can never have enough sockets in um, in a fish house. As some of you probably know, you've got about 3,000 extension leads running all over the, all over your fish room, getting from A to B. But uh, this should be quite a few for what I've got in mind in here. So, uh, and it's all surface, it's all looking tidy, you've got it all nice and level now. And now I've just got to thread in all my wires, so all my sockets are down there in the corner. And, um, and I can just touch up all the paint then. I've got some little bits of holes and things because it's an old coal shed that I've got a lot of filler. So I'm going to fill all these in and then I'm going to go over it and give it all a, a little coat of paint again afterwards. But it's looking smart, coming along. Like I can say the ceiling's all finished now and looking tidy with that strip light there. And then we've got all sorts of different hangers and all the um, all my acro illumination lights which are going to be hanging up in here. And um, I start to take shape and then we can start building tanks and doing all the fun stuff. But this all takes time. But we're getting there. So I'll see you on the next little stage. Okay guys, right, we, what we've got now is I've, I've done all the wiring. As you can see, I've pushed it all the way through there. We've got all the sockets on now. All the wires have been run through all the way along. And that's all my excess cable there, which, when all that timber's moved, this is all the wood for my stands, which I'm going to get on with next. We're going to be building a wooden stand all the way around there for that nice tank, that nice three foot square coral table, which is going to go in there. And we're going to have a built in sump underneath. Um, we're going to have some kind of racking. I haven't worked it out what I'm going to do across here for the racking system yet, whether I'm going to do a very narrow, staggered double tier, or what I'm going to do, or just keep it in one long rack going all the way up. Who knows? But we shall find out as time goes along. I like to play things by ear and just make it as I go along. So um, I find that's when I, do my, when I do my best work, is when I'm just thinking as I'm going along. When I'm doing one thing, I'm thinking about doing another thing. But there's the last run there. Um, also, I've got to run in another one into that socket there as well and then go out up through there drill a hole through the wall and then run it up through there through into the house and link it up to the mains and then all these sockets then will be live and we can use them and then i've got to screw on all these indoor all these individual caps 
up here, which obviously got seals and gaskets around them. So we can make sure these are nicely watertight because obviously it's, it's going to have a bit of condensation here. Now I have got a big extractor fan, which I think I might put up in that corner there. I'm not sure. It's quite a large fan. I ordered it, but it came it was a little bit big, so I might not use it. Or I could put it in between the two doors. I don't know at the moment. I'll have to see what's going on, but I might have to buy a smaller extractor fan because we're going to be having a lot of condensation in here because of all the water that we're going to have, have in here with such a small space. So, um, But we'll get there in the end. Yes, it's amazing what we're going to fit into this. Well, basically, it's a metre. It's just over a metre wide. There you are. It's over, just over 100 centimetres wide. Now, that so many of you guys have been asking me about my jellyfish tank over the last couple of months. Um, when is it going to win it? Well, I think it's been longer than that, to be honest. And um, how many, you know, when is it going to be up and running? When is it? Going, well, what it's going to be, I'm going to put it down in that corner there. So that door there obviously opens that way. So it's going to be behind that door when it gets used. But it's going to be a big central point there. So it's going to look really nice in that corner there. It's going to be just off the wall. So those sockets are going to be behind. And um, so that's where the old jellyfish tank is going to be going. And what I plan to do later on is maybe just get a little chair in there so I can sit down and watch it all. And um, it'll look quite smart. So that's where the jellyfish tank is going to be living, guys. And um, obviously it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be heated because you don't have to heat the jellyfish tanks. Um, so looking really looking forward to getting that up. I've got it running in the house just with fresh water in it and a couple of bits at the moment and have bit it has been running in there for quite some time now but um yes loads of little jobs to do up around here all these little reveals all around the place i've got to get them all fixed up and rigged up i think i'll leave the letterbox there that still works and um i could put a little tray under there thinking about opening a po box so if any of you guys want to send any um any letters or anything like that or any pictures to stick up anywhere, you can do it and you, they'll fall through there into my little basket for Mark's Aquatics Mail. So I'll have to go and sort out a PO box at some point. Also, I've got some pretty big holes up in the, the masonry work as well. And there's a little gap up here because the walls, they threw these places up. They didn't really build them too great, these coal bunkers. So we've got gaps around. But I'll expand and foam these up and then trim it back and paint them and cover them up. Make sure it's all sealed in there as well. As all the way around the ceiling as well. We're going to make sure that's all sealed. We'll run a bead of seal all the way around here as well. Make it all look tidy. Anyway, guys, this is where I am so far on the build. And um, so that's part one. So I hope you've enjoyed that first part. Like I say, I'm back on the mend, raring to go. And really excited about getting this up and running. And um, showing you guys how to breed and do all these marvellous things with the corals and all that sort of stuff okay anyway take care of yourselves love you loads you're all stars and i'll see you on the next episode of mark's aquatics bye for now just me and my guitar.